And ne next we'll have the candidates for the uh, St. Genevieve uh, Board of Aldermen, or Board of, Board of Education, rather, sorry. We're ready to begin with candidates for the uh, St. Genevieve R2 School District Board of Education. Um, with us tonight, we have uh, Joan Donzie, who is an incumbent member of the board. Um, James Kirchner is also an incumbent. He is not with us this evening. Um, so we have two of the three candidates. And the other candidate is Mr. David Bova. Uh, there are two seats available on the Board of Education. So there are three candidates that will be on the ballot for the two seats. We'll begin with uh, allowing Ms. Donzi to open with a two minute opening statement. Hi, my name is Joan Dunsey. My husband, Tim, and our son, Chad, are here with me tonight. They're right up there. So I'm gonna embarrass them since I have to be up here. Um, uh, we have another older son, his name is Jacob, and he's in Kentucky, and he goes to school at Murray State University. I was gonna tell you a little bit about my background. I've lived in St. Genevieve my entire life. I'm a graduate of St. Genevieve High School and a graduate of Southeast Missouri State University in Cape Girardeau. I have a bachelor's degree in business administration with an emphasis in accounting. I have been employed at Citizens Electric for the past 27 years and I'm the manager of finance there and have been for the last two years. I'm also very active in Boy Scouts of America. I'm currently the Weeblo 2 leader for PAC 468 for Chad's age group. There's Chad and 10 other little boys. Jacob, our older son, is an Eagle Scout. And for all of you Scouters out there, I also have completed the Wood Badge course. If, if you're a Scouter, you know what that means. And I'm active in the church I attend. I go to church at the First Presbyterian Church here in St. Genevieve. I teach middle school um, Sunday school, and I also do the children's sermon each Sunday at church service. I'm also going to be taking over the youth group in the fall. Um, I have served on the board of adjustments for the city of St. Genevieve for the past 10 years, and I'm active in the El St. Gen Elementary PTA. I'm the treasurer this year for that organization. I believe in the public school system. I believe every child has a right to attend school, a right to learn to the best of their abilities, whether they attend college or enter the workforce following high school. I believe students of our county deserve the, to, do, to receive the best education possible. If elected on April 3rd, I will strive to set policies and guidelines to achieve these goals. I am a product of the public school system. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is David Bova. Uh, grew up here in St. Genevieve County. Uh, graduated from St. Genevieve High School in 1990. Uh, married my wife, Julie, in 1997. So we've been married about 14, going on 15 years. I have uh, three daughters, Kara, who graduated from St. Genevieve, and uh, two younger daughters, Allison, who is uh, 13 and in the eighth grade at the middle school, and Alexis, who is 10 and in the fourth grade at the uh, St. Genevieve Elementary. I also have a granddaughter, her name is Autumn, she's four years old, so a pretty vested interest in the success of the school district. Um, I enjoy seeing kids succeed. That's one of the main reasons I'm running. I uh, want to be a part of con that continued, uh, seeing those kids continue to succeed. The school board has done a great job and I would like to be a part of that. Uh, I enjoy being a part of the community. I'm a member out here at the St. Genevieve Elks Lodge. I've been the treasurer for the past six years, uh, member of the St. Gen Elementary PTA. I've uh, been a member of the St. Genevieve Jury Defet Committee for multiple years, and also on the Comprehensive School Improvement Plan uh, Committee at the school itself. So I do enjoy being involved. Um, I think change is good, and the school board uh, has benefited and would continue to benefit from some new additions. Uh, I'd like to be one of those new additions. And um, last but not least, um, I'll be a sounding board for those of you here, uh, those in the community, uh, the faculty, the support staff. Uh, I will listen and be your voice on the school board and um, hope to continue to uh, lead the school board and the school district to be uh, one of the top in the state. Let's, let's start with a general question. Um, if elected, what are your top priorities? Just let me 
That's okay. Our top priorities, um, we, we have a change in administration this year. You know, Mr. Stewart retired and we've hired some folks that we feel are gonna do a really good job for us at the school. So that, that's always a big change whenever you have administration changing the way we do. Also the um, common, the state common core standards are scheduled to be released in the next year or so. It's gonna change most of our curriculum at school. Um, the teaching process is really changing. So that's gonna be a big undertaking when they announce, they haven't announced what the standards are gonna be yet. So we're, we've got guidelines that they think is gonna happen. So we're working toward those. We've put off rewriting math and a couple other science, I think science. So um, until those cores come out so we can establish our curriculum to achieve those goals. But those are the main areas. Uh, well, like Joan said, with the change in administration, uh, I think a priority would be to help guide those individuals uh, being part of the school board to set the proper policy and procedure to help them um, and hold them accountable also um, to continue uh, to do the right things for the school district so that we have continued success to keep them on the right financial path which uh, our school district has been blessed with uh, a positive operating budget and good financial standing uh, compared to some other school districts in the state just stay on that path um, and just continue to set policy and procedure so that the administrators can keep us there. The Archie School District has been accredited with distinction for many conse consecutive years. With that record in mind, what specific changes and improvements do you believe are necessary, if any? There's a few areas I think that I would like to discuss if elected with the board and the administrators to improve. Um, I would like to see more of our kids go to two and four year colleges. There's nothing wrong with vocational school. Um, I would like to see more of that here versus Perryville, but um, work with the local organizations to maybe offer more uh, scholarships to our kids, maybe increase the number of uh, activities that the children can be involved in uh, to get them more involved so that they can uh, you know, be a, a better part of the community and go on to those two and four year colleges. Uh, that seems to be one of the areas where, one of the few areas where we're under average versus uh, other districts in the state. Um, and like I mentioned earlier in that answer, um, more activities maybe for the kids to participate in, not, not more spending of money, but look to where we could add clubs, organizations, maybe sports, I don't know. Uh, again, these are things that I'd like to discuss with the uh, board if elected. Um, the, the requirements, for, we've been um, accredited with distinction since 2005 and we were notified recently that we did achieve it this past year also. Um, we, did, we do that because we meet adequate yearly progress and all the other state requirements and federal that is required upon us. And um, really it's the teachers and the students who do that, not really the board. Um, we set the policies, they set the curriculum, we approve the curriculum, but we just have great folks at our school that, that are able to accomplish that. And, and honestly, the students take it seriously now. So we continue to, to strive the importance of the testing. I know when we were in, when I was in school, it was like, oh, we've got to take those goofy tests. And I don't know that everybody really worked really hard at it, but I think the kids truly do now understand how important the testing is and allows us to get these awards that we've been getting. And they're gonna be changing, like I said, with the core standards coming up. So we'll have new, new achievements to meet. Thank you. Mary Ann? Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, so there are so many uh, states that the schools are uh, decreasing their funding and everything. Just to, what, if that comes to, what would your pre uh, priorities be in the cuts? Yeah, we've been very fortunate. I heard um, this morning on the radio actually that Edwardsville, just across the river from us, had a board meeting the other night and they released 62 teaching positions, which is uh, astounding. I can't believe they're I don't know how many teachers they have, but that's just a, hum a huge amount of teachers. Um, we are very blessed in our community. We, we are funded by the state, but we're heavily locally assessed. We have a lot of big industry, and 
we, that's why we have not been as affected by the cuts from the state as other districts around us. If it does come to that, you know, we would have to look really hard at what programs to cut. We don't want to sacrifice education, that's for sure. I guess my answer to that is be, we would want to focus on right now making sure that doesn't happen. Obviously, we can't impact what the state decides, but from our level, you know, just make sure to plan, uh, you know, those assessments, um, make sure we're looking forward, make sure we continue to plan for what money is coming in, uh, just like we're, I think the board right now is, and the administration is planning for uh, the taxes that are being challenged by some of the local businesses. Uh, don't plan on spending those so we don't put ourselves in that situation. Um, and kind of same as Joan, if it did come to that, uh, it would be a tough decision, but academics would be the first thing to look at, uh, I mean, the first thing to hold true to. Uh, we wouldn't want to cut class size or increase class size, I'm sorry. That would probably be my first thing. Thank you. In order for our, our children to compete um, as adults in this day and age, what, what do you think are the most important skills we need to be teaching them in school? What do they need most when they graduate? Couple answers to that. One, um, just the involvement. Again, I talked about that with even more opportunity for them to be, whether it's in a club or a sport or an organization, just be a member of something at school. Uh, that I think translates into membership, involvement, participation in the community itself later. Uh, it also makes them feel better when they're at the school. Better grades, better test scores, better results for the school district. Um, also, I mean, I think that we should look at, and the board should look at, should we be teaching our kids a little bit more about technology? Uh, I know there is a, a great technology department at the school, but uh, maybe offer more classes centered around technology, possibly finance, things like that. I think um, we should continue to prepare our students to go to a two-year or a four-year university to continue their education and hopefully encourage them to come back to our community to use those skills when they're finished. Um, I also believe that extracurricular activities also build great skills for um, leadership and encourage those also. We, we can never get away from reading, writing, and arithmetic. You can't function in the world without those things, so that, that would definitely be important. Sure, if I may uh, jump in with a question. Um, in 2011, the assessed valuation for the district uh, the property valuation uh, climbed by $16 million. Yet the school district board voted to increase the tax levy on personal property tax um, from $3.26.9 to $3.30.4 per $100 of assessed valuation. If you could tell us where you stood on the issue and why, and where do you see the tax levy trending in the future? Me. Um, we did raise taxes just a little bit this year, even though assessed valuation went up. There's, and I'm not going to claim to be an expert on this topic, but there's a difference between new construction dollars and not new construction, and something had been reclassified, I almost believe, with the wholesome plant um, amounts out there. So there was something, I was in favor of it. Um, you know, the, although the, the amount changed, it was very minimal. Um, and, you know, since we are heavily assessed locally, we, we have to depend on those tax dollars because we're not going to get the extra money from the state even if those dollars do not materialize. Um, without being privy to the intricate details of the budget, um, I would like to think that the tax levy could have stayed the same with the increase in assessment, um, but I also know that there was planning involved there around um, holding back of taxes from local businesses, um, payments in lieu of taxes, things of that nature. And, you know, I would like to keep it lower, but I, I'm going to default to the board that they thought it was the right decision. It's a four cent increase. It's for the right reasons. It's for kids. It's for the school. The school is ranked 26th in the 
state out of 513, so obviously they're making some pretty good decisions. Uh, as far as the future assessment, I would imagine it's going to stay the same, but um, once those payment in lieu of taxes run out, that we're going to have to plan that. And uh, that's it. Yeah, I do have one question. Oh, okay. I do have one question. There's so much about um, you hear, we read in, in the paper, you, read, you see on TV about bullying in the schools. Does our system have a good bullying system to correct this? If not, is there need to be one in place different? The school board and the school district does have a policy on bullying. Um, it's in the policies and procedures, procedures that get sent home with parents. Um, there's different levels uh, of uh, punishment, I guess you would say, uh, depending on the school. I think, uh, dep I think depending on the building, whether it's an elementary student or a high school student or such, and depending on the offense itself. So I think it's definitely been addressed by the board. It's definitely been addressed by the administration. And uh, luckily, we haven't had, you know, very many drastic cases of it that I'm aware of. And uh, I think that's due to the leadership in each of our buildings. We have great administrators, great teachers, and they're setting the right example. They're rewarding positive behavior. And um, I, I think we're on the right track there. We do have a, a anti-bullying policy. And um, it's just, you know, it's harder and harder as there's more technology to address bullying issues. You know, used to you you would be you know who was being bullied because you could see that happening. Um, today, in today's world, you can't. It can be cyber. It can be texting. It can be Facebook. Lots of different media where maybe lots of folks don't know that's going on. So we we do try to stress to students if they do know someone's being bullied to to let the administrators, the teachers, the principals know so that. So we can address those issues. Um, we do take a very strong stand on that, and if if we do have disciplinary actions, you know, we can't we can't talk about those publicly for the students' sake, but we do take those issues very seriously. With the uh, Performing Arts Center nearly complete, and last year the expansion of the uh, elementary schools. Uh, what, if anything, should the district address next in terms of facilities? Um, we've positioned ourselves pretty well. We, we added space for expansion, you know, and right now we're, we're really not growing a lot. Class sizes are down a little bit from where we stood before. We're, you know, we, we don't have a lot of land left over. We're going to be expanding some parking areas behind the auditorium for use with the auditorium and the football facility. There's been some talk about a baseball field, but really that's about all it's been is talk. There's really been no action toward that at all. Um, so we, we really feel like we're positioned well for a while, and we'll see where that takes us. As Joan said, I think the, you know, possibly the expansion into a baseball field, even though it's talk, uh, would be a nice addition to the school. The, the Performing Arts Center, the football field, the stadium, um, the new gym, um, well, recently new, are all, you know, greeting cards for our district. And I think they say a lot when people come in and out of town, whether they're moving, whether they're relocating a business, you know, it, it's a statement that we care about our school district. And I think a baseball field would even add to that. Uh, of course, it would have to be within the budget, but I think that would be a great addition. Beyond that, I don't know. Now with the uh, the uh, Performing Arts Center and the arts programs addressed at the school, I think uh, between athletics, academics, arts, you know, like Joan said, we're we're in a very good position. What do you think the school's role is in teaching values to students? I I think it's highly important. Um, would hope that the parents are the first source in that uh, instance, but we've got to have people running these schools who set the proper example, who reward positive things and, uh, you know, take the negative stuff offline and discuss it privately with either the parents uh, or the children, whatever the situation necessitates. But I think if you don't have the right principals, assistant principals, 
um, counselors in particular that um, we're not doing our kids justice when it comes to morals and values. I think the counseling department in particular um, does a fine job at the uh, school district. I know there was talk of, I believe, adding a clinical psychologist to the counseling group. I don't, I don't know if that's been done, but I think that would be a great addition to help improve programs for gifted kids and for problem makers, for lack of a better term. And that would also help in the uh, improvement of values and morals at the school. I, I agree with Dave. I think, I hope that that begins at home with parents, but unfortunately in our society today, sometimes that doesn't happen. And you know, we just need to make sure we hire quality teachers and, and administrators to help teach the kids that, that need that help. It's unfortunate that Mr. Kirchner isn't with us tonight, but uh, I know that you have some areas of agreement. Is there a reason why voters uh, should feel you're the most qualified candidate for the job? <laughs> wow, when they asked that earlier, I was like, oh, please don't ask us that. <laughs> <laughs> because I so don't like to talk down about anybody, so I won't. Um, I think all three candidates this year are very qualified, and any of us would do a great job. So. Just pick who you'd like to serve. This is uh, almost the exact same answer I gave last year. I think everyone on this stage, and, and Jim, he's not here obviously, is qualified. I think the only difference is something I met, alluded to in my opening comment and that the change is good. And I'd be a new addition and I'd appreciate your vote. But uh, again, Joan and Jim and the other board members have done a fine job so I'm sure they would continue to do so. Uh, let me ask, do you believe the, uh, the school board has been responsive enough to the community and transparent enough in its actions? That's a good question, Toby. <laughs> I do. I've been to multiple school board meetings. Um, responsive. Um, Community members are allotted a certain amount of time to speak at school uh, school board meetings, and I think that's very good. The, the The meetings are posted online. I'm sorry, not online, but on the, the local access TV and open to the public. Uh, closed sessions, obviously, are not, but I mean there are personnel decisions and such involved in that. So, transparent to the extent that it can be, I believe it is responsive. I think there could be some improvement, but I'm not necessarily saying that that's uh, to the board. It, it's it's the, the administration, the board as a whole, just listening. And that's one of the things that I, I promise to do. I will listen. I think uh, many do a fine job, but that there could be some room for improvement. Um, I know sometimes that it comes across that we aren't being as maybe open and transparent as a lot of people would like us to be, but we deal with students and individual situations quite a lot. And it gets, there's a delicate line between what we can release and information we can't release. So whenever it seems like we're not being open enough about something, just keep that in mind that sometimes we just can't address any of those issues in public. Uh, let me ask you kind of a similar uh, type of question, just directly with the process of probably the most important decision you had last year was the, the hiring of the new superintendent. How, did you, how would you rate the way that process worked and uh, the results the board came up with? Actually, I had that in my closing remarks. <laughs> it was a very busy year at, Saint, at the R2 school district this year. Um, we did hire MSBA, Missouri, Missouri School Boards Association, to facilitate that process for us. Um, I was one of the big pushers for that, actually. I thought that we needed to, even though we had a highly qualified candidate in district, um, I felt that we should explore those options because it just seemed the right thing to do. And we did, and, and they facilitated some meetings for us and gave us back feedback. They did some training 
with us to let to help us do the interview process to know what good answers were and maybe what not so good answers were they did background checks they let us know about the qualifications of the candidates that we interviewed so i think it was a very detailed and very good process that we followed and we did end up choosing mrs jokerst she just did a great job at the interview and you know we know her we know that she sets high standards for our curriculum and we expect that to continue with her so we're very we're very pleased and excited that that she is going to be our superintendent and we chose jeff lindsay as the assistant superintendent and feel very confident in his skills too i i would give them an a for their process uh and their choice uh this question came up a lot last year obviously in the election and in private interviews that the um the the teachers unions held and things like that and um the school had a great awesome candidate sitting right there available and could have just chose to promote her and luckily she did get the promotion but i think they went the right path they uh you know vetted everyone or didn't vet them but interviewed uh outside candidates because uh, you never know in-house would be in my book the best way to go as long as you're, you're qualified because you know that person you know how they're going to operate but you never know when there's just that that super qualified person just sitting out there waiting for another job opportunity an assistant superintendent just waiting and uh, they went out and they interviewed for that and ended up with the exact same candidate and uh, I think that's the way it should have ended up Thank you very much. My, my apologies for the coughing and recovering from the flu. <laughs> I guess each candidate has a one minute opportunity for a closing statement. Uh, again, as I mentioned in my opening statement, um, I just think that the, the top priorities here are to continue to succeed as a school district and I, I think I'd be a, an excellent member to help the school district continue to succeed both academically and financially and uh, I hope to get your vote on April 3rd thank you um, I have served the past nine years on the Board of Education I've served the last five years as vice president um, I just wanted to let you all know too during the interview process we had several candidates who just stressed that they wanted to work at our school district like we're the district that everybody wants to come to now which means a lot because in my opinion we get the best of the best by being noted as that and it means to me it means a lot to me to know that chad has the best of the best when it comes to education so just i would love to continue to serve the taxpayers and the students and the educators at our school district in the future thanks to both of the candidates for participating tonight and we'll begin with the uh, special roads district here shortly.